My name is Amin Kinabe. Uh, I work in the VMware and the standalone Tanzu Kubernetes grid. I'm the tech lead for the compliance uh, node and uh, for Windows offering as well. So today I'm going to speak about the gRPC security and service mesh, in particular uh, in East2 service. Uh, I have like 20 minutes and I figured out there's not much time to cover the entire presentation, so I have a few demos that I will skip. But you can download the, the presentation in the scat.com and see the demo live later. So for the agenda today, I will start talking about the mesh and zero trust security and how zero trust is something that was adopted by the entire cloud native ecosystem as a, a standard. Then I will talk about spiff and service identity. Uh, we'll, we'll look at the spiff specification and spar implementation inside the issue. We're going to the issue, uh, east west traffic specifically for gRPC. We'll take a look uh, in the evolution double quotes or the latest things that are happening inside the issue. So we'll go in the gRPC proxy list. We saw like the keynotes before. Uh, there are some, some things going on in the proxy list side as well. And we're going to go in the ambient mesh. That's where I'm more uh, involved in researching more. And we hope we can conclude this uh, in the time. So introduction, introduction here, the mesh and zero, uh, zero trust. So why does it matter? Right. So we should uh, provide like the security features that are like, well, uh, battle tested. Uh, it mitigates like the external and, and external, internal as ex, and external threats uh, that you have in your own platform, your, in your architecture or enterprise. Service mesh uh, can give you ownership and authentication and authorization layer and they are decoupled for, from the development experience and we, you are using this kind of architecture. Uh, it provides uh, audit protecting, so it gives you like protection against no repudi repudiation. You can have like logs and you can have metrics that proves your service was accessed. Uh, with all these capabilities, uh, capabilities, you have like a strong gRPC uh, functionality or architecture that complies, complied with the zero trust security uh, specification. So what is, in the end of the day, the zero trust security thing that everyone is talking about? There's some Gardner um, conversation before all this stuff that started this movement, but the main pinpoint is this NIST paper SP80207. And the zero trust model assumed that an attacker is present in our enterprise owned environment and you are uh, responsible to secure all the pieces of the assets inside your architecture because you don't trust anyone, like in real life. So it enforces the principle, the principle of least privilege for network and applications. And it's not a single architecture, but as, as uh, guiding principles for workflows, system design and operations. Uh, zero trust and uh, service mesh and CNIs and all these products and vendors are not silver bullets. It just defines like best practices and good guides on how you can implement this kind of uh, architecture. So it's not uh, a product that will define how you protect your system. It's like uh, a lot of factors that together and, and with the best practice give you the correct protections. But if you get the, the spec and you get, get this paper, you have some interesting principles of zero trust. I highlighted some ones that match with this presentation. The first one is uh, four, the item four is access to resources is determined, determined by the dynamic policies and may include other behaviors and environmental attributes. So the policies according to, to the specification are set by subject or the entity that's performing the action, an action, the action that's being performed by the subject and a target, the object that the action is being performed upon and a condition. So this is like basic, uh, basic traits that you, you need in your policy to define and is defined by this principles by this spec. Other point that uh, the fifth point here is the enterprise monitors and measure the integrity and security posture of our own uh, and associated assets. One important uh, and interesting part is the auxiliary components. So you have not only your zero trust model and architecture, you have auxiliary components that creates and enhance the protection. And they include like enterprise, uh, public infrastructures, CMs, threat, threat and intelligence feeds, networking, uh, and system log, uh, activity logs, uh, all these other components that came up and make your uh, architecture more secure. 
So if you get, if you read uh, the documentation, like the spec, you can see they define two main pieces of uh, in this diagram. And this is not a coincidence that these two implements this because it's like a default telecom control plane data plane model that Kubernetes implements as well. So they define this as a policy decision point or PDP where uh, your control plane or ECUD in this case allows you to uh, insert via the CRDs or uh, manage the entire data plane is like the brain of your uh, your architecture. So ECD makes this role of policy engine and policy administration. The other side of this is the data plane where your proxy has like uh, an envoy in the traditional architecture. And you can consider this as a, as a PEP. And this is responsible for enabling monitoring and management the connection between the enterprise research and the su subject that your policy will be applied in the, as you're going to see in the front. Uh, with the con connecting like uh, and being managed by this ECD. ECD and Envoy communicate by the XDS protocols, a bunch of protocols that they communicate to uh, translate like these policies and other uh, things like secrets and routes and how you configure dynamically uh, your Envoy in your data plan. Cool, that is one part that's important here. Um, that's the core of what every, everyone is using nowadays. I think uh, Google Cloud is implementing a lot of things in the SPIF and SPIR uh, side as well. So SPIF is like a service identity. This is like the core of how you start to identify your services. So you have your gRPC workload and SPIF is a way for you to identify how your workload uh, is identified by other peers. Uh, SPIF uses the SPIF ID, that's the format of SPIF ID, you have a trust domain, you have a workload identifier, and uh, you can, you have like two ways to, to uh, change the information across your cluster, you have like X509 certificates, and you have uh, job tokens, so you can use like both East-West traffic or North-South traffic uh, using these two ways uh, of identifying the SVID. Good news is that the Envoy and ECU uses SPIFI for mutual TLS authentication, and this is transparent when you start to use in this thing. So when you are you install ECU in your cluster, you have like an authentication, uh, an encryption and authentication by default uh, for the peers that are connected on the services that you have on, on inside your cluster. Okay, so uh, SPIFI is the, the specification. You can get like, uh, there is a good book around on the SPIF website, and the SPIR is the implementation of that. So someone implemented this SPIR, uh, SPIR outside the entire ECU thing, but ECU implements their own SPIR based on the SPIF implementation. So the SPIF, uh, the SPIF authentication, the, the attestation works for both uh, node and the workloads. Are, those are the two things that you need to, to attestate or authenticate. Uh, these pieces are pluggable, the servers and, and the agents uh, are pluggable. The first thing that goes is the node uh, attestation. It's a, required for the agent to authenticate and verify itself when connected to the server. And the second is the workload itself that you need to pass an authenticator in the Spire server API. Uh, this is a more complex uh, example. So we have like, um, you have like, Two front ends in the in the corners and the middle you have the back end and you have this envoy proxy in the middle of them uh, doing this uh, doing this filtering you know, and, and apply and having these policies where you can uh, identify what each workload uh, is and which one is authorized authorized to access. In this example here, you have an open uh, regular implementation here of filtering of like okay. Do you, you have a valid path, is this a request method? Uh, and you have like SPF ID for this particular service that you are allowed to access. This is like the initial implementation in the website. You can see the, the, the example, you can download this and run your kind cluster and understand how this pieces works. Um, so after that, the evolution, I don't know if this evolution, the history is the evolution, but you can have a, another implementation of issue service mesh uh, and there are some options for us here in the service mesh to 
be compliant uh, with this zero trust architecture. So the first thing uh, is the continuation of the gRPC proxy list. So the gRPC proxy list, as uh, the, the, the other keynote was talking, you have like this library inside your own Go code. So uh, you have like a data plane inside your own application. You don't need the proxy, you don't need the envoy anymore. And this is pretty cool. There are some advantages, but, but you still need to bootstrap a file and you still need the issue agent to get this information on how to connect your control plane, how you're going to connect your control plane and uh, do the XDS conversation. Uh, the trait here is that all logic resides in the application for the control plane connection. Um, the other, the other thing that's going on with the serverless, uh, with the sidecarless ambient mode here is like you can handle all the traffic uh, east west with without envoy in the middle of that. So if you see this diagram here, you can have like C east to CNI that bring up these IP tables rules and all the traffic that's inside this node is passed by uh, the Z tunnel. So Z tunnel is a Rust demo set that runs on each node, and this gives you layer four capabilities. It doesn't give you layer seven capabilities, but at this point you have eight eight uh, eight bone traffic encryption from one side to to another. You have MTLS, you have a spiffy ID, you have like basic authorization without any side uh, sidecar or, or any envoy in the in the game. If you want to improve like your layer seven uh, capabilities and like filtering your own gRPC policies, you can add a waypoint. Uh, a, 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 an endpoint is still an envoy, but it's not like a sidecar injected in the webhook admission. Uh, when you start your workload, you can or cannot use the layer seven, layer seven uh, proxy. So you can decouple uh, and then if you want, you can run a deployment and you can scale this by namespace or service account in, instead of like having one one on one uh, option. <laughs> All right, so how does authentication and authorization on these two works? Uh, CRDs. So you install your CRDs, you manage your CRDs, and you have like for authentication, have this peer authentication CRD where you can uh, set the mode, like everyone that's being the mesh needs to be strict and needs to use that. And in the authorization side, you can filter out, out by the policies that we saw in the beginning. So you have like the target in the selector of the match la label. You have an action is allowed or denied. You have uh, the subject that's generating this. You have the principal uh, that's generating this. And you have a, co a condition where you can filter uh, if this rule is applied or not. So in, in this example here, we have a service and you have a method and everything that's coming from gRPCA uh, is, is allowed to pass through this selector. The selector is the for the waypoint uh, proxy. Uh, I don't think we have the time for them demo, right? Let's go to the good part. <laughs> so I, I set up here. Uh, I set up here a, a Nisu cluster, a kind cluster locally. Bring up some workloads on that. Uh, that's a, an example of the workloads. So what I did is like I go into one of the workloads and start to uh, gRPC crawl uh, for the, for the other server. So you have here like um, a server, a service called gRPCB, and you have this dum dummy server stream. Um, and then I will apply this policy. So I have gRPC and gRPCB, and they are connecting each other via gRPC. And then I apply an authorization policy uh, in one of the waypoints. So this label is directly for the waypoints, not passing uh, to the uh, workload. And I have this principle saying, okay, everything that's coming from gRPCA going through the dumb server stream, uh, service and method 
and I, I need to enable the reflection because I'm using the reflection behind the scenes as well for this, this app. I apply this policy and I say everything that's coming from gRPCA, it's fine, it's good to go. So I go to gRPCB and do a request uh, for the gRPCA. And this is, uh, okay, our, our back, access denied. You cannot go from gRPC uh, A to gRPC B, gRPC B to gRPC A. So I'll go, I'll go over and, and SH into the gRPCA and go to the gRPCB, and you can access that. So you're filtering by your method and, and uh, you are gRPC curling the other side with the correct uh, information. So let's say I, I change it, uh, my method here in the service and say real server is, uh, is, is the allowed part. I go back in my gRPCA that is allowed to do uh, the request by the subject and do try to do a request again for the gRPCB and now I have an access denied because I'm at this point filtering the layer, layer seven uh, gRPC methods. I roll back again. <clears throat> yeah, so if I roll back again, you can access this back. All right, so concluding the presentation here, I did some uh, some tests uh, in the in the consumption. That is like some issue testing, uh, load testing, uh, validation where you can like do requests and uh, have some re some interesting results, like super fast. Even if you we are talking about like one point nine milliseconds for like a thousand requests per second on a simple gRPC call. That's uh, fast in most of the cases. Uh, this is the traditional sidecar. We have like an envoy running here. For the layer four Z tunnel, we are talking about 300 microseconds. What's ridiculous. And for the GPC proxyless server, we are talking about 200 microseconds. Picking the right choice for you. Uh, we have like uh, those two modern ways to do things in the GPC side and are uh, mostly integrated with Istio. Uh, Proxyless in the Istio side is still experimental, so if you're interested in that, I think the tra uh, traffic directory is, is a better choice because it's GA already. Uh, but as you saw, it's much faster. The consumption footprints is lower. Uh, is decoupled from the control plane, but coupled uh, in the code. Decoupled from the data plane, and, and but coupled in the code. And the ambient mesh is another solution that's uh, getting some traction nowadays. It's uh, pretty interesting. You have more integration with Istio. Uh, can be a good, a good, uh, a good choice if you're looking for my, like metrics and more traffic controls and, and other features. That is, shout out to Vladimir uh, that helped me create the content. And that's it. Thanks. Hello, this is Samant. Have you done the testing with uh, traffic director, similar results? Like, is there a difference between Istio? I think it's a good place for you to look <laughs> around and have a good answer about that. Thank you. Yeah. And the demo you showed, is that open source or is something we can try? Uh, it's on my YouTube channel. Uh, oh. I maintain a repository with these make files, make like a make file thing for Go, for Go, and then you can run uh, all these steps okay. by yourself on kind. You just need kind. Closer. You put in kind and K9. Uh, okay. And uh, one other question. So identity here, right? Authorization, I saw that one. So how did the uh, server identity? Is it using spiffy based identity for the service? Identity? Yeah, it's by default. Is you gives you this by default. Okay, Every time you. you get a workload, it gives you this identity for your workload, both in the ambient mesh with outside cars and the sidecar part. Wonderful. Thank you.
So for the authorization part of it, I saw the configuration file for the Istio, right? Will this be translated into an uh, AuthZ understandable policy or uh, um, how does that work? Uh, this is a this is a CRD that's translated automatic for this uh, airbag. So this without this part here, without the this part here, that's layer seven. Uh -huh. This uh, Z tunnel it still can 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 parse from like only the subject. You cannot do like layer seven on, on Z tunnel. Uh, you can do everything on on uh, waypoint and and envoy. And you can do everything on uh, gRPC Proxilus as well. This will be translated to gRPC Proxilus in this issue experimentally. And the enforcement happens at the gRPC server itself? No, it happens in the layer before that. So you have in the MB8 mesh, you have like this waypoint part here that's the employ. It happens here. Or Zitana, it happens here. It's a worse process that's running in the node. Or uh, in the process, it happens in the application. Thanks. Hi. Uh, I would like to know uh, how is the service account passwords being managed, if there is any on the password? Yeah, if there is any on, on the waypoint proxy. Uh, there is no password for this service account, okay. so this is what this is something that that's cool because if you have permission, you can personalize this service account, right? Okay. Uh, in the namespace, so the isolation is by namespace, and this is super dangerous <laughs> because, like, after you have these policies, everything integrated, and then you own this namespace, you can create uh, and replace an existing uh, service account for a pod if you have permission to create this pod. Understood. Thanks. <laughs>